Welcome to the hotel clientele tier list where today I'm going to be entertaining that question that I have every 3 a.m. of Is this character going to die in the near three years future of Genshin Impact? Usually the answer is a no, but let's see if their like lore has any kind of hints potentially of their imminent demise. And before that, I just want to put a really quick disclaimer here. There's no guarantee that any kind of character that has like a PC design is going to die, by the way. We only have like Senora to actually go off that just because you're a hot person doesn't mean that you're, you know, excused from imminent death. For the purposes of this video, Lumine will be considered as my Abyss sibling, which will have other implications later. So for the first one, we have Aether or the Traveler. Now, interestingly enough, I don't think Aether has like a 0% chance of being zero just because I think that Hoyovers likes their tragedies. Now think about it this way. You're going to be going up against a god one day in the future, in the very, very near future. And who's to say that Hoyovers is going to give you a happy ending of you not just going to Conria with your sister? Like, we're gonna put him on the 50-50. Aether better not lose in the 50-50 of life. And because he's the playable character, or at least he's the traveler, you know, he's definitely the catalyst for any kind of sob story where the Abyss sibling dies. F to pay respect to Lamine. Albedo. Now, I think we can all agree that Albedo has one foot in the grave, and by one foot I mean his entire body in the grave and he's just war eating for, you know, something bad to happen. His literal character story has the ending of, will you be able to stop me when I eventually lose control? Whew, if there's anything that the Durin backstory has taught you, whatever Albedo is, even if he's like quote unquote the perfected Cretaceous being, the Principus Cretaceous or the talk guy, yeah, no, he's like, there's just something about Albedo and the way that Mihoyo presents him, like, you know how every time that he's on the screen in an event, which is weird because he's like usually only in an event, like we haven't seen him in an Archon quest or anything like that, he's usually hanging out with the Traveler a lot. Like, I think I've said this before, but you know how it's weird that, like, yeah, Albedo's looking for a friend and I think the Traveler is very close to him, but at the same time, why do I have a feeling that Hoyoverse is trying to sell you this character so that in the future they can take it away from you? You know, maybe I'm just being a little pessimistic, but Albedo has a foot in the grave. Albedo is like a future Hu Tao client. I'm not surprised if he actually knows Hu Tao. Amber actually gets to live a whole life for this one because Amber, I think that in her character story, I don't think that she has any kind of death flags, especially that she's very young. I don't think that a death would really do anything for her story besides end it. So in my opinion, I think that Amber is completely safe at the moment when it comes to the death, as she is not a future Huta client. Ayaka at the same at the same way. She gets the exposure when it comes to her parents, but I think that her story is more about her and Ayato building up from grief in general. That's what her story is about. So it wouldn't make sense for her to die. I think that it would just be much better if she learns from grief. And the same goes for Ayato, which is basically their entire thing. Their parents are dead, but they have no choice but to stick together as a family. And they need to be together and they need to make sure that they support each other because, well, they're all they have. Plus Thoma. I also think that Thoma's pretty safe. You know, it'll be pretty sad if Thoma dies, by the way. Imagine that. Thoma dies. Oh, that's actually kind of sad now that I think about it. You know what, maybe we'll just put Thoma here for the 50-50. We know that Hoyoverse likes their grief, and I really, really wouldn't put it past them to just somehow, some way, kill Thoma off just to, you know, reinforce the grief of the Kamisato siblings. Barbara gets to be practically immortal because Barbara is the golden girl of Genshin Impact that Mihoyu would never want to touch. Dude, not even the Traveler can simp for the for Barbara. Like Barbara straight up left when she found out the Traveler was like trying to make moves on her. That's how you know that Barbara is a chad. But Barbara doesn't really have anything in her story that would even constitute for a death. Though it would be horribly, horribly sad for Jean if she were to die. I don't think that Barbara's death would really be anything besides a plot device. So I really hope that they won't do that to Barbara. Jean, I don't think is exempted from death. Jean, in my opinion, is very hardworking and we know that she will sacrifice herself for Mondstadt and the Knights of Avonius and the decree of Vanessa, in my opinion. I think that Jean would be an amazing sacrifice in the event that something big happens in Mondstadt. Mondstadt has like a lot of really suspicious characters and a lot of connections with Conria. So Jean being in the front lines, acting as the Grand Master and putting her foot down as the final paragon of hope for the people of Mondstadt, would be an amazing sacrifice. Honestly, I would put her a little higher just because of that. You know, assuming that the coffee doesn't kill her, you know, the, the overworking and the lack of sleep. Beidou, I think, is also a really good 50-50. She's 
pretty much chilling right now, so there's really no need to kill her, I don't think. Unless Mihoyo really wants to torture Kazuha, and then that's another thing, because Kazuha's going to have a second dead Electro friend if she were to die, and that would be very, very Pepega sad. But I don't think that Beidou has any reason to die, and I don't think that her lore is really insinuating anything, and I think that her and Ningguang, in my opinion, are pretty much safe from the imminent demise, and if she were to die, I think it would be in the final moments of the game itself in the event that there were a world-class cataclysm where Mihoyo needs to put up the stakes. I would think that characters that are politically powerful like Kuching, well you're not Kuching, like Kuching, Ganyu, um, Ningguang, Beidou, I think that them being so prevalent as the characters that are supposed to be this paragon of proper and control and they usually know what they're doing when it comes to really big god fights i think that them like at least one of them dying would be a really good way to cement just how dire a situation is so again don't lose your 50 50 in life the chances of death are never zero but bennett's practically immortal by the way if you ever read his lore you would see why he's immortal basically he says that he doesn't really mind dying Dying to him isn't really that big of a thing, and dying to him is nothing more than just, oh, they get to sing ballads of me in the future, and if anything, that's going to immortalize my legacy. And Bennett, in my opinion, is the perfect character to keep alive because of his bad luck. He is so unlucky that he thinks that death is an opportunity as an adventurer. And he knows for himself that he cannot die because the gods never looked at him with such a favor. And because he sees that death is something kind of positive, you know, Ben is a very optimistic character. Unfortunately, the gods will literally not touch him. He will be unlucky for his entire life and hopefully, you know. Good luck, Bennett. Or, you know, on the offside, he is a future Hu Tao clientele and then he absolutely just gets shafted. That's another potential, you know, that's another potential perspective of that. So either you think Bennett's completely immortal or you think that one, that his bad luck is going to kill him one day and both are very, very valid <laughs> opinions. Chongyun, I think, gets to, get, to live a good life. Chongyun, I don't think, has any kind of reason to die. I think that narratively, he's just a side character that, you know, he's vibing, and not to mention that he can't literally die to the spirits because of his yang energy, and I don't think that Chong Yun has any reason to die, so he's just going to be there. Maybe, like, I honestly think that anyone in the new generation of characters, this includes Sing Cho, Xin Yan, and Shang Ling. I think that any of the Liyue kids are basically the new hope of Liyue in the new future, if ever, you know, the Traveler returns to Devat in like 10 years or something, you're going to see like older versions of them, I guess, and they're basically the paragon of change, which is pretty interesting because Liyue is the land of contract, but yeah, I think that the Liyue kids are pretty much safe, pretty, pretty safe. Diluc and Kaya, now here's the thing, I don't think that both of them will die. Diluc and Kaya, in my opinion, are two halves of the same fate. One of them has to die so that the other gets their big character moment. I think that both of them dying would just waste both of their characters in my opinion, but for example, if Diluc were to die, then Kaya's last bit of connection with Monstadt and his old past and his old family and his father would essentially be dead. It's going to be a bigger conundrum for Kaya to see if he's going to stay loyal to the reason why he was put in Mondstadt in the first place versus the people that he has now grown up with. On the other hand, Diluc is going to lose another figure in his life, another br another important figure in his life, a brother figure this time, and this will put him into a deeper line of vengeance. But I think that one of them has at least a potential to be a very sob story, and one of them is going to be a future hotel client. Diona is pretty safe. I don't think Mihoyo is going to kill any children. That is a complete lie now that I think about it because, again, there have been 10 cases of child sacrifice. If you know one of them, feel free to comment down below which part of Genshin's lore has sa child sacrifice. Fischl, I think, um, is also a pretty interesting character to put in here. And also Razor. Again, I think that anyone that is relatively young in this story, I don't think that any of them are going to die. Except for someone that I will show you later. A taller official. I wonder if she'll go by Amy in the future. I wonder if she will. Dude, but older, older Razor's gonna look so dope. Hu Tao is not a future Hu Tao client. 
I think that Hu Tao's role in all of this is just that she's in the background, she has a lot of prospects with death, she does mingle with death a lot and spirits, and I think that if anything she would be the medium of all of this, and I don't think that her she herself will die in the narrative of Genshin Impact. Klee, again, is practically immortal, again, she is an elf, interestingly enough, and I don't think that they'll kill Klee. I don't think that they'll kill Klee. I, I really hope not. Um... Every time that I tried to say that children are safe in Genshin Impact, I always just kind of look at myself and I go, "Is that's not true. Children are one of the most endangered species in the entirety of the game. So every time that I put them in that you're practically immortal, I'm kind of just worried. Um, I'm going to put Chi Chi here though, because I don't think they'll kill Chi Chi twice. You know, I don't think they'll kill Chi Chi twice. I'm literally bargaining with the Hoyo gods, please don't kill the children. <laughs> Please, just kill the NPC children. I know that you have like a- I know that you have at least a hundred plus of children are, that are dead. Lisa. Oh boy. So here's the thing. Lisa's lore is actually really scary. She has a dead mom hair aesthetic too. And not to mention that she's friends with an animal user, so I'm sorry, but someone's going to die. <laughs> and not to mention she's Electro, so whew. Oh boy. Anyway, Lisa, in my opinion, is an interesting character because of the hints in her lore. The way that Mona talks about her constellation, the Tempest Fuji, it basically talks about um, stagnancy. Now, in one way, you can see that her life has become very stagnant. Instead of pursuing to become the Purple Rose, she is now a librarian, something that even Albedo questions. But at the same time, stagnancy could also mean that you are no longer alive to do any kind of progress with your life. And in an interview in March 2020, I'll try to link it down below, there was something about Lisa's story in where she touched a book and her lifespan was basically cut in half. Now the logistics of that and the current canon of that is unknown if they actually implemented that into her story or they changed it. But at the same time, we do still have in-game voice lines that hint that Lisa's life is getting shorter. The reason why she's being this lazy person is because she doesn't have much energy left. The Abyss Sibling. I will tell you this right now, I really think that the Abyss Sibling has a very high chance of dying. I don't think Hoyovert is going to give them a happy ending, unfortunately enough, but Lumine's story is very tragic and Lumine's story also connects very well with Intifot. Who's to say that she's going to back down even with the fight with Aether? I honestly think that maybe she is so dedicated to her cause that she is willing to die for the people of Conria just to revive the homeland. It's not really looking all that pretty for the Abyss sibling and the Traveler to have a happy ending. Moving on. Mona is actually pretty safe, interestingly enough, and so is Sucrose and Noelle. And now we have Tartalia. Now, interestingly enough, Tartalia is very willing to die, now that I think about it. Ajax's story is pretty interesting in my opinion, and it really does relate well with the story of Tartalia, someone that is perceived as a very powerful person, but their power at the end is their demise, their pride, their ego, their arrogance, and it basically drives them mad. The story of the original Ajax basically led him to suicide. Tartalia, on the other hand, is very self-sabotaging, whether we like it to admit it or not. Yes, he does care for his family, but he clearly does not care much about the way that his body is reacting to his foul legacy, his delusion, and basically everything else in between. He is someone that is looking for a fight most of the time, he is always getting stronger, and he doesn't really care about what he needs to take in order to get stronger. And not to mention, he already told the Traveler this, a fight to the death. Like literally, the one of the voice lines in his story just tells the traveler, we will have our fight to the death. But in my opinion, I think that's the best way for him to go. Death in battle. I think that Tartalia's story as a warrior and his utmost prevalence, I guess, when it comes to honor would be the best way for him to die. And it would be amazing if he would die. You know, because he's a playable boss, first playable boss, and then first playable character death. I think it would be very thematic. Ooh, now we have a triple kill. Venti, Xiao, Zhongli. So, Venti has a very big risk of death, by the way. Venti, just as a character, in my opinion, is just so shady and just so knowing, but he also wants to protect the Traveler in his own little way. Venti is suspicious, but he's suspicious for the good of the characters. He is someone that will protect, and he was someone that is willing to go 
passed his principles in order to keep the people of Bonchlath safe. And that probably will include sacrifice. I am not doubting that Venti is willing to sacrifice himself for the betterment of the people of Mondstadt, but I can't really say for certain because Venti himself is an enigma. Venti, I feel like if he's going to die, will die in the very end of the story itself. I feel like Venti's death would be one of the most impactful deaths, if ever, that would come. Xiao, on the other hand, is another interesting character because I think that Xiao also is a future hotel client. Xiao, besides like the miasma and the corruption that we are seeing in the story, also has the theme of sacrifice. I think that him finally finding peace in death would be a very, very sad way to end his story, but it would be fitting. Rosaria is someone that I think is on the middle ground of death. Eula, I think, out of all of the characters in Monch that also have a, has a really low chance of death. Actually, no, I'll put her a little higher just because she's a knight of Avonia's captain. And if she were to die, I feel like the best way to kill her is through sacrifice. The final way of vengeance against the Lauren's name. That would be one of the saddest deaths in the story, if that were the case. Someone that has been belittled by not only her family, but also by the people around her just because of her last name. And she ends up dying to save a lot of people because she's the captain of the Knights of Avonius. Story-wise, it's not that probable. I don't think that they're gonna kill Eula, but the chances are never zero, so interestingly enough. Yanfei also, I don't think, really has any kind of reason to die. Um, I don't think that she has any reason to die, as well as Yu and Mia. Uh, Sayu is also pretty safe, in my opinion, just as long as we don't do anything, like anything stupid. Kujo Sara and Yai Miko are actually not that low on the list, now that I think about it. I feel like if they were going to die, it would be a way to cement A's story further. Now we're going to put A here, because I don't really think that A is going to die, like, narratively. Actually, I put them a little higher, now that I think about it. I feel like their characters, well, their character lineage and their ancestry has a knack for being the most important figures to the Raiden Shogun. And if they were to die, that would be a great catalyst for any kind of emotional backlash, whiplash that A is currently feeling, or A has, because again, Tengu General, and we have uh, a descendant of the Kitsune Saigu, which is basically very unfortunate for A. I don't think I'll put them that high on the list now that I think about it, maybe I'll just put them a little lower, and then I'll just put like Raiden, like very very low because i don't think raiden's gonna die i don't think a is gonna die anytime soon a i don't think has any reason to die because she is currently going through her phase of change a just is a work in progress and it would be such a shame for her character to immediately die after just seeing that you know what i mean kazuha is an interesting character in my opinion now i would put him here but he has a knack of like getting himself into danger not only did he you know, was he on the verge of death from A? And not to mention that he used to be a wanted criminal hunted by, you know, the government. He now also has a story with Kunikuzushi. I think Kazuo's story has always been very unpredictable, but we do know that Kazuo has a very kindred soul. He is willing to sacrifice to protect others. And I feel like he's going to get into a very big battle one day in his like future stories. The chances are never zero for your death, kid. You know, just follow Tomo to the grave. And speaking of Tomo, this guy's like, this guy's practically immortal because he's dead, so don't worry about it. Kokomi and Goro. I feel like Kokomi and Goro teaser on that line, on that same line as the Liu at Chising and the other Knights of Avonius. When it comes to like dying on the front lines in the event of a cataclysm, I feel like these two, or at least one of them, is going to perish in the event that there's this massive worldwide cataclysmic event. Ali is practically immortal, there's no way that they're going to kill like a franchise character, okay? Ito is also pretty chill, I don't think Ito is going to do anything stupid. Shun Ha! The Lady of the Cataclysm, the, the Daughter of the Cataclysm, I actually might put her a little higher. Like, same goes for Xiao, in my opinion. Her th The theme of like self-destruction in the future is very prevalent with Shunha. If we get a second character story, we might get a little bit more about that. Yeah, that's basically it. So comment down below what you think I should change and who do you think I should put up or should I put lower. And in my opinion, this is all just for fun. As fun as you could. 
make this out to be. I don't actually think that a lot of characters are going to die. Like, I don't actually think that all of these people are going to die. There's just something about Genshin's lore that it always makes you feel like something bad's gonna happen. Even though right now they're presenting the characters are just very lively, very happy. We have to remember that we're still in the third um, story, the third chapter of the world, and we're already kind of being tested when it comes to a character's safety. But comment down below, who do you think is a character that is completely safe from death and will not die narratively or like whatsoever. But nevertheless, my name is Aster and thank you for chilling with me. This is actually just a very much more tamer video because I wasn't going to do much editing. I say that. And yes, this is all just for me today. I'll see you next time.